We've all had verses in the Bible that we've seen everywhere, on coffee mugs, on t-shirts, and, and they're popular, and, and we read them and we feel like we really understand what they mean. So for example, you may have seen the phrase from Philippians 4.13, here's what the verse says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, or some versions say through him who strengthens me. Now, uh, you've probably seen this not just in a coffee mug, but I've actually seen this with athletes. Like they have it on their bodies or on their clothing and they're getting into their sport or whatever they're about to do. And they're like, yo, I can do this. Like I can do all things through Christ, through him who strengthens me. So here's the question. What does this verse actually mean? Oftentimes what ends up happening is we might take a verse and we take it out of its context, which can lead us to actually misunderstanding the verse. And if we misunderstand what the verse is actually intended to say and mean, then we can misinterpret the verse. And, and here's the thing, if we misunderstand a verse and then misinterpret it, then the natural outcome of that is to misapply it to our lives. So for instance, here's what the potential miss could be with Philippians 4.13. And, and before you're like, oh, Oh my gosh, I've done this. I just want you to know, like, I've done this. So, so we're all in this together, right? Uh, but this is the idea. Like, hey, whatever you're going through, you can achieve. All you need to do is set your heart to this thing. Uh, you need to win in sports or you need to win in life. Like, whatever you need to win at, don't worry. Philippians 4.13. It says it can happen. It is in the Bible. Or it might be something like that dream house on acreage with a wrap around porch and, uh, and a couple dogs that are totally obedient. Like, you know what? God's got you, Philippians 4.13. Or maybe something like, man, financial blessing. Like it would be so good. Like if I could just set my mind to this thing and, and get this financial blessing, Philippians 4.13, God's got you. You just gotta trust Jesus. A medical miracle, it's just around the corner. God's got you. See, Philippians 4.13, you can do all things through Christ, through him who gives you strength. And then we'd be like, yo, the scriptures don't lie. It says it plain and clear. Like all things, that's what the English is, right? Like I can do all things through him who strengthens me. It's got to mean all things, doesn't it? But I have a question. I'm from Chicago. And one of the plights of my life is that the bears have been consistently bad since 1985. I thought I can do all things. Well, how about this? The dream house never happens. The financial blessing doesn't come through and you lose everything. The cancer keeps spreading and it leaves your family grieving. Does this mean that God lied? Does this mean that God actually didn't give you the strength you needed? Or what if he never had that strength in the first place and now we begin to doubt God? Or even worse, what if God intentionally chose not to give us the strength that we need? What does this tell us about God? Is he cruel? Is he lying to us? Well, I wanna give you a confident assurance. No, he is not cruel and he is not lying to us. Let's do a little bit of a course correct with Philippians 4.13. This single verse is connected to a series of verses in a discussion that the Apostle Paul is having with the church in Philippi. In the verses right before this, Paul is actually talking about the fact that regardless of what happens, whether suffering or persecution, Things are well or they're not well in every situation and circumstance or all things that Paul has learned the secret of being content. Well, what is the secret? It's the fact that Paul can do, again, all things because of Jesus who gives him strength. Now, we have to reconnect the all things of the context of this verse, Philippians 4, 10 through 14. The Greek word panta, it's translated as all things. In this verse, it's placed grammatically in the first position. Now, just follow with me, which adds an emphasis to it. In other words, it summarizes everything that came before it. The panta, the all things are when Paul has little or when he has a lot, when he's really well fed or when he's incredibly hungry when he has everything that he could possibly need or when he doesn't have anything that he needs. In other words, Paul is saying that in every circumstance that we face under heaven, the secret source of strength and stability for the Christian is the strength that we receive from Jesus. This isn't so much about the ability to do all things as it is about the power Jesus gives us to process and cope with all things that we come face to face with in our lives. Notice how important this is. 
It's not a strength that's conjured up by one's own doing. It's a strength that is placed in the Christian by the Holy Spirit through the power of the Spirit that brings honor to the Father. It's not a strength that will accomplish every whim and wish that we have. It is a strength that will help give us the strength to endure every situation and circumstance that we face and still remain faithful to our King, King Jesus. The strength that we receive from Jesus is something more powerful, it's more profound than something short-lived like financial prosperity or health or a positive outcome for something you want. It is so much more significant. It is the strength of endurance to get through the good and the bad without losing yourself or giving up. It's the endurance that we need to keep faith and not turn to despair. But this is true for both good situations and bad. We often focus on the bad or the difficult situations, which is totally understandable, but Paul is also warning us of the subtle seduction of earthly prosperity. He says, the strength that we receive from Jesus will give us the power we need to reject the allure of money or succumb to the vices of gluttony. This is in Philippians 3.19. So when Paul says pawn to all things, he really does mean all things. But this is not a magic incantation that Christians can state to get what we want. It's a type of proverb that reminds us of the foolishness of the fleeting wisdom of the world in comparison to the precious wisdom of the kingdom of God at the very end, our ability to endure and get through is itself not something we can claim as our own. It's a gracious gift of God that was applied and given to us through the obedience of the Son and by the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Of the way that John Chrysostom, Bishop of Constantinople, long time ago puts it, he said it this way, any achievement I have belongs not to me, but to the one who gave me strength.